and hello everyone. Hi everyone, I'm Petrina from the APDT and welcome to another instalment of Train Your Dog Month. This is our final evening and I'm joined by Lorraine Smith who's a full APDT member, um, has a master's from Lincoln, is generally an amazing person and heads up our Good Companion Awards. Hi Lorraine, welcome. Hi Petrina, thank you for that. That's uh, yeah, <laughs> a little bit over the top really. I've got I've got a great button. When you see what Lorraine's got in store for you, where you can uh, learn all about the new and improved Good Companion Awards, you'll see why I press that, because she's worked so hard on this and given up her time voluntarily. Um, if anyone's watching, can you just let us know in the chat? Yep, yeah, we've got some people watching. Excellent. Oh dear. Um, Lorraine, why don't you just tell people a little bit about yourself? I know you're presenting the Good Companions, but it's nice to know who's behind the voice as well. So, um, I'm Lorraine. That's a start, isn't it? Um, I have been a dog training instructor, dog trainer, whatever you want to call us these days, for about six years now. Um, prior to that, I was a research scientist for 20 odd years. Um, so I came to dog training a little bit late. I went off and did a master's at Lincoln and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Worked um, for an assistance dog charity for a good few years and now I've got my own business where I primarily do one-to-ones, um, helping people out with training issues and stuff. But right. I also work part-time for um, canine partners as well, training up their puppies. So that's nice and fulfilling. Nice. And um, if anyone's watching, you're in the Berkshire area, aren't you? Yeah, West Berkshire, so sort of Newbury area side, not not the, the posh side, the, out <laughs> in the stick. <laughs> oh, fabulous. So, hope everyone's ready. People can hear. Jane said, good evening from London. Denise can hear, can't wait. Uh, Wellington, Somerset, Megan is, um, and Zenga's in Scotland. So we've got, we've got a little tour, actually, of the UK there, so that's cool. Um, are you ready to share your slides, my love? We'll give it a go, see what happens. Yeah, if Lorraine my disappears, which it has been doing off and on all day, then Katrina will take over. Yeah, Lorraine's been having some internet problems, so you might get me for a bit. That's I hope that's all right. <laughs> cool. You can go. And so hopefully you can see that. Yeah, we can see that great. So this is going to be a whistle top tour of uh, the APDT Good Companion Awards. It's been, I, I've, I've redesigned this. I'm basically standing on the shoulder of giants. Um, it, it's not a new thing. It has been in existence for some time. I joined the committee fairly recently and I was given the job of updating it. So that's what you're going to see. So hopefully you'll like it. So quick quick tour why are we why why do them what are they who can do them when can you do them and how do you do them so why would you want to do the good companion awards as many of the previous trainers over this um, training month have said you know this is how you train your dog and a lot of what you have to do is measure how you're getting on this is a really nice way of measuring your progress in training your dog and hopefully it'll give you a sense of achievement to actually um, get through an award and get the award certificate, etc. And it's basically about having fun with your dog because, you know, that's what it's all about. They're called Good Companion Awards because we want the dog to be your good companion, but you want to be a good companion for your dog too. So on the left here, you can see our newly hot off the press um, PDF that will be available for guardians to look at that tells you about the awards so they're basically awards that you can achieve as a pet dog guardian um, together with your dog so you will have an assessment but it's not very formal it's all about your dog training skills how you um, what your knowledge of dog welfare is behavior all around good companionship basically and your dog will be assessed on you know how it gets on with you. So who can take the awards? Anyone, anyone with a pet dog who wishes to can take 
one of these awards. They are written in such a way that hopefully if the, there's enough wiggle room for people with dogs with special needs, for example, um, if you've got a deaf dog, they obviously can't respond to their name, but we can do things like just giving them a gentle touch and they respond to that. Things like um, we don't ask you to get your dogs doing any particular positions. So it's about the transition from one position to another, which may be different for a greyhound compared to what a Labrador wants to do or a Chihuahua or any other kind of dog. So it's about inclusivity. Any full member of the APDT can teach you. Anyone working under a full member of the APDT can teach you as long as they're doing the kind, fair and effective methods and following the APDT code of practice. The only people who can assess you is a full member of the APDT. So if you're not familiar with how to tell whether somebody is a member of the APDT, they should, when they're displaying the badge, have their name and their membership number underneath it. So that's a nice, easy way for you to, to tell whether your person is legit or not. Where can you be assessed? Well, anywhere, really. In your home. Some people, like myself, only work on a one-to-one -one basis. So we can work in your home, we can work in your local area. So wherever is appropriate for the assessment, it doesn't have to be like the traditional puppy class. So puppy classes, you can do it in a class setting with your assessor if that's how they want to set things up. And COVID made the way that we've changed, the, the way that we work change so much. And a lot of people work online. That too can be accommodated. You can do the awards um, using Zoom or whatever platform your trainer would have, or, or even by submitting videos if that's the way they prefer to work. It's about asking your APDT um, dog training instructor what it is that they would like to do. You've got four levels of the awards. So puppy and foundation are basically very similar. Um, the puppy award is for dogs who are up to seven months of age by the time they take the award. And the foundation award is very similar but it's for dogs who start at the age of six months or over. The discrepancy between the two is you can take up to six weeks to take the award. So that's six weeks of assessment, not six weeks of training. You can train for as long as you like, but you have six weeks to complete all of the exercises to get the award. The Improver Award basically is um, building on the foundations that you have in, in the earlier awards, making things a little bit harder. So for example, with transitions, you might be asked to do two transitions instead of one. Um, it would also bring in some of your everyday life skills that a dog needs to do. You know, things like um, an emergency stop, for example, which, you know, it's, it's something that dogs can be very it can be a useful uh, thing for your dog to learn walking near traffic is is another one or going sending to bed going on from that the intermediate level is the next one up um in the intermediate level and the advanced level there are there is a section that is um not compulsory so there are nine different areas for example, gun dog work, scent work, agility, hoopers, rally, trip taming, assistance dog training, heel work to music, obedience. You have to pick three of those. So between you and your trainer, what they have available and what you can do, that is, um, you know, three of those. So it's about having fun with your dog. It's trying new things out. It's trying things that you have not done before. And then, of course, the advanced award basically builds on um, what you've done in the intermediate. You probably notice that they've all got their little colours. So they are the colours of a rainbow starting from uh, violet 
So that means there are a couple of colours that could possibly go on after the advanced if we got to the point where somebody says, well, how about doing a few more? What do you get? A nice certificate. Look at that. Um, we've designed new certificates. Your in trainer can put their own logo on there if they wish to, but everybody gets a similar certificate. Everybody has the same standard that is being looked at and these beautiful rosettes as well with our um, new Good Companion logo on them as well. So you get a certificate and a rosette. And here's a few little videos just to show you some of the criteria. Um, my scruffy old boy. So transitions might be sit from a down, for example, down from a sit, or you can do a stand or sit from a down. You're allowed to use treats whilst you're doing the awards. Not to do the luring, but you can use the treats to reward them all the way through. We're not about obedience for the sake of it. This is young Dexter doing the leave it, and he was told that he could take it, and now he's being asked to drop the slipper. So you can see it's a life, life event, and my little girl dropping the ball for her dad. Like I said, we want you to have fun with your dog. So playing is part of the foundation and puppy awards, learning how to play with your dog, learning what your dog likes, learning how to make sure that they're having fun with you, but also making sure that they've got some play manners about. It. So playing in the right way for your dog. There's a little companion um, information sheet that goes with all of this that's got some basic information about how dogs learn, why they should play and things like that. That is for the um, guardians to read and you will be asked a couple of questions just in an informal manner for each of the levels. So things like, what does your dog like to play? How do you stop them from uh, playing with a toy and running off and, and guarding from it? That sort of thing. Nothing too hard. So this is my young girl is older playing with Anna out in the field and we're learning to swap toys. And young Dexter again showing manners through a gate. So it's about everyday things that dogs can do. So he's showing his manners. He was told he could come through. And it doesn't matter which way the gate goes, whether it's towards him or away from him. So here he comes. Please excuse my dirty car. My husband is getting my dog out of the car. Again, showing manners. She's not rushing through the gate. She looks a bit sorry for herself. That's because she says, mum doesn't normally film me when I'm getting out of the car. What's going on? Here we have a bit of foundation, loose leaf walking. Lovely Sophia doing it with my girl. So we're not asking for anything really strenuous for the foundations, but it does get harder as you go up through the levels. And again, rewards appropriately as you're going along. Dexter's just been sent to bed. Which he's very proud of and getting rewarded for. And here he is showing us how to do a 10 second settle. That's all we're asking for is that he can settle down by the side. It can be on a lead or off a lead. It can be in your class, it can be in your home. This old has just done a stop for us. And Dexter's doing the chin rest. So that's just some of the things that you could be doing in your um, award. So I'd like to thank a few members of the APDT who have helped me with the editing, proofreading and bouncing ideas around. Special mention to Dexter and his companions. Um, and that's pretty much it. So I'm going to stop sharing. Thank you, Lorraine. Really enjoyed that. That was great. I thought we gave a really good overview of what the awards are about. Um, You've got, have you got the rosettes there just to uh, wave your rosettes? Have you got them there? If of course, I chose the one, I, I, you know, because I, 
my colour. But yeah, they're beautiful, aren't they? They're yeah, really, they're really lovely, lovely. Lovely rosettes that you um, trainers can get from APDT or direct from the supplier themselves, whatever takes their fancy. Because what we're trying to do is sort of standardise everything within the APDT. So rather than me getting rosettes with my logo on and you getting your rosettes with your logo, we want it to all be the same. So if somebody sees them um, in someone else's house, they'll be instantly recognisable as, oh, you've got that from the APDT, um, rather than Absolutely. it being... Yeah. Instantly recognisable, and you know that because we've set out the standard in such a way that all of the trainers are working to the same standard, you know that if you've done it in West Berkshire, or somebody's done it in Scotland, or somebody's done it in Somerset, they're doing the same thing. So you know it's the same. It's the same thing for every. There is room for people to put their own logos on the certificates, but other than that, yeah, it's, mm. it's all standardised. Fab. Okay, so we've got a few questions, um, and I'll ask Esther's easy one first, which is, <laughs> can we can we teach the levels outdoors? Absolutely, yes. You can teach them wherever you like, wherever it's safe to do so. Um, you saw that some of those videos that I did were outdoors because I don't have a training venue, so yeah, definitely. And um, she also asked another question, which I asked her to sort of clarify on. So if I read the first bit out, um, Esther asks, with the good citizen grades, there is some status for dogs to complete the grades, particularly for guarding breeds. Is there similar with our grades? And then the follow up to that, me asking is, what, what do you mean by status, Esther? And she answered, it used to be that if you had a guarding breed, the KC grades completion suggested from an insurance perspective that your dogs were trained, safe, reliable, consistent. I hadn't heard that, I must admit. Um, there is no guarantee that any dog is trained to a particular standard because every dog is an individual. Yes, they've managed to pass an award. They have managed to do the things that are set out to be done in the award skitting, but it doesn't mean that your dog is able to go and do X, Y, Z because you might have woken up with a headache or they might have slept awkwardly or they might be put into a position that they can't cope with. So trying to say that your dog is trained to a particular standard and therefore your insurance should be lower, I. I think it's a bit of a misnomer, really. I've got a feeling that it might have been a bit like in the old days when we used to get, I used to have classic cars and we used to get car insurance and they used to say, you're a car club member. And I'd say, yes, I'm a member of this club. So it sounds terribly sad. But I've got a feeling um, that they used to ask you about the Kennel Club Good Citizens just as be be because some of the good citizens stuff was based on like temperament can the assessor come in and touch them all over and do all these things to them so it was kind of a almost a bit of a personality temperament test so I've got a feeling it might have been that I don't know if it's still something that's available um but I think it's a really great question actually Esther and it might be worth us looking into to ask insurance companies if mm. there was some way of 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 working with that I think yeah it's, it's a possibility I mean, there is certainly part of our awards is about you teaching your puppy to be comfortable with handling, you being able to say what they are telling you whilst you're handling, so what their body language is like, and then taking it up slowly through the levels so that you're doing more handling and other people start to handle the dog. So yes, there is that post that, mm. you know, progression and other people but I still think you know any dog can wake up with a pain in the neck or something that that means that it's, it's not really mm. what they can do on one day isn't necessarily the same as what they can do on another <laughs> yeah yeah I guess if you look around Europe at think places like Switzerland where if you have a dog you have to do this certain amount of training to prove that you're a good dog owner or wouldn't it be lovely if we had something like that in the UK <laughs> A lot of paperwork. <laughs> so, um, uh, there was Melanie has asked, uh, is there any promotional material available? 
Coming so, soon. <laughs> coming soon is the answer. Um, the APDT website will soon have uploaded um, a section for the public to be able to read about what's going on and a section in the members only area for them to download their certificates and buy their rosettes and get their um, booklets and stuff. Yeah. We have talked about doing some videos that would show you for each of the different grades, this is what it looks like to do, this is what we're looking for, this is the standard. That's a little way off. Um, we have got one member of the committee who is going to, if she remembers, take some videos of people going through the grades. So that would be nice as well. So it's not beyond the realms of possibility. We just don't have anything yet other than our handouts, um, booklets and, and such like. Um, and Melanie also asked, can clients submit video evidence for assessment? Yes, if that's the way you work, absolutely. Um, if your trainer works normally by giving you a task and telling you how to do it down the line and you submit a video, absolutely. Yeah, I think um, what we're probably not doing is allowing owners, guardians to sign up to do it themselves, I think, is that it's not something that you would like self-study and pay the APDT directly for. It would be clients come to you, come to our trainers um, and get trained by them. And whether that's someone like me that just works online um, or whether it's somebody that does it in person, it, it, it'll be on that. It'll be that kind of way of, of working that's right yeah yeah but although you know for the foundation and the exercise if you if you take on a rescue or you've had a dog for some time and you've done the training yourself as long as you find an APDT trainer to do your assessment and they're willing to do the assessment and you can negotiate that six six weeks of assessment to do the thing you know it's it's down to individuals we try to be as flexible as we can so that we're as inclusive as possible but like you say when it comes to training it has to be an APDT trainer or somebody under the direction of an APDT trainer who mm -hmm. is following the code of practice that we've got um and Melanie asked any tips on managing client expectations should you feel they may not be ready to be assessed i guess yeah client expectations is a wonderful thing isn't it you know they can expect all sorts of things um and it's like an everyday life as a dog trainer you try to manage your people's expectations you try to let them down gently when they can't one of the reasons for doing the assessment over six weeks is because hopefully they will realize for themselves you know I wasn't able to do, let's say, um, a 10 second settle on the first week. So we've tried it on the second week. I still can't do a 10 second settle. You've got six weeks to try that. So mm -hmm. managing their expectations would be around, this is the standard. We have set it out quite clearly in the standard what you have to get to. It's about working towards making sure you can do it really. Perfect. Yeah. So nobody, uh, unlike other assessment procedures, policies, tests, it's not an exam that somebody sits on one day. It's an ongoing assessment. So think of it as being more like um, modular coursework rather than GCSEs, although they're quite modular now, aren't they? But there's no like final test like a, you've passed, you haven't passed all in one day. It's OK, we're building up to this. So and, and everyone's got their different ways of working. People might do you know, a, a beginner's course before they actually start assessing for the APDT. What are we calling our first one, Lorraine? So foundation for the foundation. older dog, yeah. for the babies. Yeah. So, so you might run a, an adult's life skills, which then leads into a foundation. And really, by the end of the life skills, they might well be ready to do the foundation. But you, you know, but you assess them over the next six weeks. And then at the end of those six weeks, you might have got them ready for the next level up and then they make sure that's there for the, do you see what i mean everybody's got their own way of working but for me as a trainer when i was teaching lots of greek classes that's probably the way i would look at it like you're always 
you're wanting to sort of go over and above in the next one so that everybody passes so it's just a way of teaching isn't it the only thing that we do ask is that you don't assess a particular skill on the day that it's taught right so you spend half an hour learning how to do a 10 second settle and after you spent half an hour doing that you assess it and it's fine you need to at least go away and come back again the next day <laughs> you know um it, it's yeah in a sense i guess to some some there may be some trainers who would rather do it all in one day um, um so rizia was just asking um when do we expect rollout to be oh do you know what lorraine's internet was going funny and I think it's done it. I think it's fallen over. Let me just find out. She said there was a man up a pole. Here she is. Well, we knew that was going to happen, didn't we? We did. <laughs> so I'll uh, I'll just read out Rizia's comment again. Um, she, her 4G is bad tonight. If anybody watched Rizia's talk before, you know that she lives sort of quite rurally. Um, when do we expect rollout to be thinking ahead timing for a puppy class? So all of the material is ready now. It's mm. a matter of just getting it on the website. So within the week, mm -hmm. we had we did have a um, a deadline, a, an aim for today, but unfortunately, fitness and stuff across Christmas holidays didn't help. But within the week. Yep. Our fabulous designer, Tracy, has been working away at it. Um, so it's pretty much all there now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, LOL, man up a pole. I had a man in my box the other day and my internet went off. But we won't talk about that. I said, you've got a man up a pole, Lorraine. We've discussed it. I'm sorry. It's the last night. I'm waiting for a glass of wine and feeling a bit cheeky. So um, <laughs> you should, yeah. <laughs> um. And Esther just had a comment. Some autism charities use Good Citizen as their benchmark of competence. Could we promote in their direction as well, please? Yeah, I have actually experienced that with some people that had assistance dogs. They said, or also rescues say you need to go to a trainer that's going to offer Good Citizen schemes. So I think that's a great suggestion, don't you, Lorraine, that we could approach? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think so many rescues now, some of the really good rescues are sending their people to APDT to become APDT members so hopefully mm. we can get the word out amongst them and into the rescue world and absolutely I think it's a much more life skills based thing than good citizens there's a lot less of the strict obedience that used to be in the good citizens or at least when I did it 10 years ago um, it's a lot more realistic i believe i mean people may argue with me once they've read it but hey you know <laughs> mm -hmm. that's my belief anyway great um and then just a comment are trainers able to advertise their classes using the apdt name and or level e.g apdt in or just improvers if you're a full member of the apdt sorry i should let you answer this one lorraine And she's gone, so I'm going to answer it. <laughs> um, are you there? Are you there, Lorraine? Ooh, I'm back again. You're back again. Did you see the question? Um, Without oh, APD, I did. Yeah. So, you want... as a member of APDT, you have to show your uh, um, membership number and... Uh, badge wherever you if, if you want to claim being APDT it is a good companion award so as it says on the um, on the uh, rosette you've got your, your good companion awards and your improver so hopefully you'd want to use them both it's it is about the APDT and their awards it's not about sending people off to do training and yeah they may be APDT members, but hopefully our members want to promote 
APDT as much as we want to promote our members. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if it's clear, Melanie, if you are a member or not. You do need to be an APDT member to run those awards. So in order to use the Good Companion name and to order rosettes and get certificates and that kind of thing. I'm sorry, we have quite a large membership, so I don't know everybody. Forgive me. Um, yeah. Can I advertise a class called Improvers? I don't know, Denise, can you? Great, Melanie, then yes, you could. <laughs> um, we we don't trade we haven't trademark levels of names. I think it would be a bit difficult to trademark foundation or the word improvers. Um mm -hmm. but yeah. If, I mean, it took us a long time to decide on these names with polls and, and, and people's suggestions and things. So, yeah, but they're not unique. Colours of the rainbow aren't unique. You know, it's it's what it is. It'd be nice if people decided to do our stuff because that's what we're here for. But, yeah. Our trademark is APDT, isn't it? That's, mm -hmm. that's really it. Yeah. Wonderful. Do we have any other comments or questions about the Good Companion Awards? Um, obviously, because this is a changeover scheme, if you already have stock of resets, then, you know, use those up. We're not saying chuck them all in the bin. That's very wasteful. Um, but we would hope that you'd be on board with the new style once you've used up your stock. Is there anything else you'd like to say, Lorraine? I hope people enjoy doing this. I really do. I I, I ate, slept and drank this stuff for quite some time. <laughs> trying to get it. So it would be nice if people are enjoying it. I know there are some people who have been um, sniffing at my heels, waiting for them to come out. And I'm sorry it's taken so long, but hopefully you can see why. But yeah. Go out, enjoy training your dog. That's what I say. So we've now had a couple of questions come in. Um, Denise asks, can I buy rosettes at Crufts? So what we're planning to do is, yes, we will have a stock of rosettes at Crufts for people to pick up. It won't be a matter of rocking up and buying them there. It will be letting us know and letting us know how many you want and picking them up from our stand here. Yeah. Um, and Colin is watching from Ontario in Canada and said, can you be a part of the APDT in, in Ontario? If you want to fly us out, quite happy to move there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're the APDT UK, Colin. Yeah, sadly, it's, uh, it's a UK thing. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what... Uh, awards APDT Canada do if they're under APDT International then I think you have my dog has class if that rings a bell um, anybody that's watching that knows more than me about that feel free to just add some comments in but I think it's or oh, that might be the American Kennel Club it's a big pond um and James just said, hi, Denise, we're hoping to take some to Crafts. Um, and Rizia said, thank you so much for all your hard work, Lorraine. Thank you, Rizia. Thank you, thank you. Should we do another one? <laughs> I, I just like that button. Um, <laughs> all right, well, if we haven't got any more questions, that just leaves me to kind of close up and um, say thank you to all of the speakers that I've had this month i think it's been 26 um it's been a whirlwind it's been great we've had tech fails we've had some amazing speakers we've had lots i've learned lots i've really enjoyed doing it um and i'll see some of you in february because we've got some more lives planned for them with some other fantastic speakers so thank you very much for being a part of train your dog month and thank you lorraine for coming tonight and speaking to us about the good companions well, thank you, Katrina. You've done a fabulous job this month, I must say. 
Have a lovely evening, everyone, and see you all in February. Bye for what? now.